By doing this, I'm covering my bases. What do I mean by that? Well, it is Friday at 11 o'clock, full disclosure, and tomorrow I do have to work until 6. Now, there is a possibility due to business that I may have to stay. I can't guarantee that I will. I'm just throwing it out that I might. So, in order not to be rushing later tomorrow night, I just wanted to shoot this video out to you guys now, get it out after midnight, and it'll be all up on the channel and ready to go. So, we have already up on the channel that was filmed earlier legitimately today, since today is officially Friday, even though this is Saturday's video, was the brand new AJ's Movie Reviews. We discussed the new releases for the week in Noah and Sabotage, as well as last week's limited release of Blood Ties and this week's release of The Knights of Badassdom. So that review is up on the channel right now, and this Sunday, just like usual, we're going to be getting a brand new Versus, and that's going to be coming out on the channel. So the weekend is full, and we lead into Monday, which will be the go-home edition of Raw before WrestleMania 30. And we're going to talk about that on Tuesday. I don't know what the future holds for Monday's video yet. I'll have to uh, figure it out, and I'll uh, get back to you, obviously. And we are in WrestleMania week, so, of course, my WWE 2K14 simulation of the pay-per-view will be coming very soon. I won't be shooting video of that until I can figure out how to do that. Once I can, maybe I will do it in the years to come, but... This year, I'm just going to tell you guys and girls out there, if you were curious, what happened in my matches. So, we're going to talk SmackDown, because it's officially Saturday's video. And that means, obviously, we got a brand new NXT from this past Thursday that I'm going to be talking about on Wednesday. And that leaves Thursday up in the air, because I don't know what I'm doing Thursday night. I'm uh, not exactly sure. You might get a live NXT update. I haven't quite decided yet. I don't know if we're watching Captain America yet or not. Uh, we might, but I highly doubt it, honestly. I think we're going to end up watching it on Friday morning. That being the case, I have nothing to do on Thursday night, so I might just do an NXT video Thursday night. Who knows? <clears throat> um, This edition of SmackDown was pretty heavy on wrestling, but the matches weren't very long. As a matter of fact, Nothing reached 10 minutes. I actually don't think anything reached 8 minutes, to be honest. But I could be mistaken because... Let me check to make sure I'm not... No, I was right. Nothing on this show reached 8 minutes. And I wrote a lot, but it didn't matter because... I mean, it's not that bad. It's only like... Two pages front and back, so four pages. It's kind of normal for a two-hour show. Which, officially, without commercials, is an hour 25. And, of course, as usual, I watch the show via my computer, and with that, everything is jumbled compared to what everyone saw that was watching it on their televisions. So, I normally talk about the order as I watch them, but actually, I'm going to talk about the order that it was watched. Now, well, the show started off with what ended up being actually my, uh, it was the fourth segment on the show for me, personally, watching it. But this is how the show started. So Batista comes out, he's got a shoe shine boy cap, dressed like Bill Cosby. He really loves Sean John fashion, doesn't he? You can really tell. And, um, looking douchier than always. He comes out, he says, for years people begged me to come back. So what do I do? I come back and you boo me. I'm a six-time World Heavyweight Champion. I'm the winner of the 2014 Royal Rumble. I'm in the main event at WrestleMania 30. You still boo me. And who do you cheer? A sawed-off, goat-faced gargoyle wannabe like Daniel Bryan. How does it make any sense? I consider it a personal slap in the face. At WrestleMania, no one is going to be laughing at me any longer. Fact remains, I am walking out the brand new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And out of everybody involved in the match, Triple H, Randy Orton, Dana Bryan, I'm pretty sure Stephanie hits harder than all of you. 
I wouldn't want her in the triple threat match. Here comes Triple H, of course, to defend Stephanie's honor. And Triple H says immediately, you know, just keep Stephanie out of this. And basically Batista says, you know, Stephanie's pretty much the reason for all of this. She's the reason for your suit and you being the COO. And you know, just to lay it all out on the line here, I really don't think you'd have any of this if you didn't marry the boss's daughter. So Triple H says, you know what, Dave, it's the reality era. They were continuing it, apparently. It's not just going to be a one-off buzzword, apparently. It's going to be something that's going to stick. Oh, joy. You don't need to worry about how I got it, but realize that I do have that power. You want to make things personal? Batista says, you know, you say that I'm living off past glories. Well, I got something for you. Reality check here, you never beat me before. The only reason I even came back to this company was to become the World Heavyweight Champion. So Triple H basically says, you know what, I made you who you were. But basically success made him soft. And then he got lazy. So he quit for Hollywood and he was all about craft services and watching your stuntman do the hard work. And since you came back, I have yet to see that animal in action. But you know what? I'm willing to do something and help you out, like I've done in the past. And I'm going to help you find that animal inside you yet again. Because tonight in this very ring, you will face off against Seamus. So we get Batista and Seamus later on the night. Okay. Interesting segment. Uh, once again, Batista trying to suck up the crowd, and it failed miserably. Triple H acting babyface only towards Batista, and... Heel towards everyone else. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting. Interesting segment. Um, Triple H carried it as always. Batista just kind of sat there and uh, said his lines, and that was the end of it. So, yeah. We got our second segment of the evening. Legitimately, this was actually my second segment of the evening. It was a matchup between The Shield, this time being the United States Champion Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins taking on Three Man Band, who this time around is Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal. Jinder sporting tights now, which I, he has been wearing for a while, and he cut his hair short, and he Slater's at ringside acting like a manager. I don't know if this means that he Slater is maybe injured. Or what? Because usually we see Jinder and McIntyre take the matches nowadays. I don't know if that means he's injured or they're just kind of like splitting it up. And I mean, normally you see at least one of them in the ring and then everybody else is kind of like replaceable. So this match was real short. And I didn't really have much to write on this. I actually had to rewind back to rewind to hit this right. Jinder gets tossed out of the ring by Seth Rollins. Seth hits the, hits the Pescado and drew forearms. Ambrose in the ring. He gets knocked backwards into the ropes and he hits Nigel's jawbreaker lariat and then plants him with Dirty Deeds, which is the bulldog driver or what I used to call Justice is Served, and gets the three count. Kane and the Outlaws come out wearing the suits and they call out their next opponents, which are Curtis Axel and Ryback. So this match was a little bit more back and forth than the previous one. I'll talk about it here. And um, Ryback goes for the hanging vertical suplex, gets countered into a modified DDT by Ambrose, and he tags in Seth Rollins, tags in Curtis Axel, clothesline on Axel, and he drop kicks Ryback off the ring apron for good measure. Seth goes to the middle turnbuckle, hits the blockbuster on Curtis Axel, charges in with the forearm in the corner, and a drop kick, whip in, and he puts on the brakes, and he charges and gets back dropped, lands on the ring apron. Axel misses the charging shoulder. Seth misses the straight kick, but catches the high angle kick. And Ryback goes to attack Rollins' leg, and he leapfrogs pretty much over the attack. And he kicks Ryback straight in the face. Ambrose nails Ryback off the steps and starts pounding away on the floor. Back in the ring, we have Seth Rollins stop with a shoulder block. Back drops Axel over the top rope to the floor and nails the no hands tope con hilo on Curtis Axel and Ryback on the floor, sending them both down. 
tosses him in, and he nails the spring, goes for the springboard knee strike, and he gets caught with a boot in the midsection. Axel tries to finish him off with a perfect plex on Kurt Hennig's birthday, mind you. Not when this was taped, but today, as in officially since it's Friday, it is Kurt Hennig's birthday. And this was countered into the leaping Insiguri kick to the face instead of the back of the head. And he connects with what is now referred to as peace of mind, which used to be called the blackout. And it's funny because Michael Cole in commentary called it the curb stomp. It is the blackout from his Tyler Black days. It apparently is peace of mind. And that's not a curb stomp. What Daniel Bryan used in the match against Bray Wyatt, that's a curb stomp. What Super Dragon used, that's a curb stomp. What Seth Rollins does is not a curb stomp. Not in the traditional sense. Not in the um, grape behind the legs and pull the arms back and curb stomp. That's the thing I used to do back in the day. Who says managers don't need a finisher? Anyway, so after the match is over, the Outlaws and Kane, they don't want to go down there. They're just going to pretty much stand back at the top of the ramp and just watch everything happen. So, Seth clotheslines Ryback and nails him with a tope as he's staring at the Outlaws and Kane. Dean Ambrose tosses Ryback in the ring. He eats the Superman punch from Roman Reigns. They triple powerbomb Ryback. <laughs> wow, this looks like deja vu, doesn't it? And the Shields stand tall after being decimated last week on SmackDown. So the Shield ended up doing ECW-style tag team booking, and they went through three-man band, and then they faced off against Ryback and Curtis Axel. I was half believing that they were going to face off against the Real Americans next, but that didn't happen. Cesaro did not wrestle on the show, very interestingly enough. So, we lead towards this six-man tag at WrestleMania that I'm not exactly hyped for. I'd rather it have been somebody else. No offense to the Outlaws, I kind of wish this was the Real Americans in this match. To be honest, the match would have been better. But I think that if you're going to put the Real Americans, and this was something that was mentioned on the WNS podcast uh, this week, I would say that if you're going to put the Real Americans in a Fatal 4-Way for the WWE Tag Team Championships, since you haven't done it yet and we're leading every week further and further away from them being a cohesive unit and more towards them splitting up as a team, if you had any indication that you were going to put the Tag Team titles on Cesaro and Swagger, you have to do it at WrestleMania. And I'm not sure they're going to do that. As a matter of fact, I think the split happens at WrestleMania. So I just don't understand why they're not doing it. And obviously the Shield have heat with the Real Americans now, so you can have that in there build up. But then again, the Shield obviously need to work with the Outlaws, apparently. So uh, yeah, it's going to be the old guard versus the new guard. So it'll be interesting to see how they do with that. It's really funny for uh, fans that have been fans for a long time, not just new school fans that don't know anything about the Attitude Era. It's kind of interesting seeing Kane and the New Age Outlaws teaming up together, especially if you're a long time fan, considering they've uh, faced off a time or two. So, really interesting. So, we get our next match of the evening, and actually... Before that happens, we get Renee, of course, has the Big Show, and Big Show is pretty much kind of skeeved out. He's got to face Bray Wyatt tonight in the main event. He says, what the Wyatt did to John Cena was simply twisted. Some of what Bray says makes some sense in a weird way. So, basically, he says, I have a giant problem on my hands. No pun intended. And he says, so do they. So, of course, he's leading towards a collision course with Bray Wyatt in the main event. So, we get our next match, and you know, my God, how the mighty have fallen. Sin Cara, who, of course, Unico under the mask now after Mystico got released from his contract earlier this weekend. And Unico's under the mask, and he's living off the glory that Mystico had when he was under the Zinkara mask when he did his likeness in the WrestleMania Scooby-Doo movie. Even though Zinkara doesn't say anything in the WrestleMania Scooby-Doo movie, it's still more Mystico instead of Unico. You don't see that, 
that arm sleeve tattoo there. You can tell which one's which. Damien Sandow, like I said, I made the comparison last week to him being Samson. Since he cut his hair, he's kind of lost his power. <laughs> so, this is a Raw rematch. And the blue light mood lighting has returned. Great. So Sandow locks on a chin lock um, really quick on the match. And he clubs Sin Cara in the back. Whips him in and clotheslines him in the corner. He charges in and it gets countered into a roll up and that's the three count. <sighs> Damien Sandow. More and more every day looking like he could be possibly either A, on his way out, B, ready for repackaging, or C, ready to make a storyline out of it. He's stuck in mid-card hell right now, to be totally honest. So, speaking of WrestleMania, WrestleMania, speaking of uh, Raw rematches, there was a really bad one that happened on Raw, a bad match a couple weeks ago with Fondango and Goldust, and this is the rematch here. Of course, Cody beat Fondango on Raw this past week, and this is the rematch of Fondango against Goldust, because apparently he's feuding single-handedly with the Rhodes dynasty. <laughs> In me. Or the Brotherhood in this case. I said that the storyline, bring him and Tyler Breeze together and have them go after the roads, I think it would be a great idea. But, for now, midway through the match, Fondango locks on a chin lock, Goldust punches his way out, and Fondango gets a nice rabbit punch in the back of the head of Goldust. And the chin lock. This time, Goldust elbows his way out, and... The new Michael Cole buzzword of creating separation is done this time with a backdrop suplex by Goldust. Ducks Fondango's clothesline, 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 whip in reverse, and he ducks his head for a backdrop, and he gets countered with the drop-down uppercut and catches him off the ropes with the inverted atomic drop, kicks him into the side of the head, and he goes into the 10 punch. Whip in reverse, he charges in, does Fondango, gets caught with a snap Samoa Joe-style power slam, 1-2, and a kick out. Fondango goes to the floor, and Summer Rae jumps in the way, and Fondango looks to take the upper hand, and Gold just is like, nope, and right hand. Toss them back in. Summer Rae stops, Fond stops Fondango's opponent from entering the ring. I saved it. And Goldust is getting in the ring. He ducks his head in between the ropes, and he gets his head kicked off by Fondango. One, two, three, and he wins this match. I don't know where we're going with this. I think that we've created an elimination for one of the two at uh, WrestleMania in the Battle Royal. Um, you know, I really like Fondango, unlike most people on the internet have pretty much soured on him. But, <clears throat> when it's all said and done, him feuding with two guys is fine, because at least gets some television time, which is a good thing. And I think that he may be the elimination for uh, Cody Rhodes and Goldust at WrestleMania, or he may just get tossed one of the first guys out. So, it could go either way, honestly. I mean, I know a lot of people are saying the bloom has fallen off the rose, but, you know, to me, I don't think so, and I think there's still legs to go with this gimmick. I'm still saying he could be a singles champion by the end of the year. It's our most April now. Yeah, time's running away fast, so who knows if that's going to happen, but we'll see. We get our next match of the evening. But before that, we get another Bray Wyatt promo. And usually I talk about these pretty much like verbatim, but I didn't have that chance this time. I just kind of wrote down some notes. It says basically that, mm, excuse me. We recap John Cena and Luke Harper from Raw, which is the Raw rebound, I guess, this time around. And basically, Bray looks at the sheep mask and talks to it. He says, if you wear a mask for too long, you start to hide behind it. And then it becomes you. Wyatt says, he broke Cena, and tonight he will slay a giant. Follow the buzzards. <clears throat> so we get our next match. It is Sheamus and Batista. 
Um, I would have liked this match a lot better if it was old school Batista, not this new guy that wears, like, the weird gear and he just, like, he slimmed down. He doesn't look like the Batista of old. And he's not. So, we get this match. We go midway through and Sheamus gets caught out of the corner of the spine buster. And he takes too much time to capitalize and Sheamus mows him over the clothesline. And then we get to the Sheamus comeback. Axe handle, axe handle, charges him with the shoulder in the corner. High running knee, and Batista goes to the apron to try to escape. Sheamus goes for the clubbing blows, and he gets caught with a back elbow and a neck snap across the top rope. When he tries to take advantage again, he gets gut shotted, and the clubbing blows get hit this time on Batista. Over the shoulder power slam, and he goes for the bro kick in the corner. Batista sees it, powders to the floor. Sheamus gives chase, and Batista grabs a steel chair, nails him in the midsection with it, and in the back, calling for this qualification. So he hits him again in the back, and he chokes him with the bottom of the chair, posts Sheamus, and rolls him back in, hits the Batista bomb, gets on the mic, and says, Hunter, are you happy? Are all of you happy? I'm leaving WrestleMania the brand new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and because apparently he's Dave Polychronopoulos, he says, deal with it. Yeah, this, was, this wasn't really good at all. I didn't really like this match. Um, first off, like I said, Sheamus is a terrible babyface, and he is badly needing a heel turn, but I know that right now he can't, at least until they turn Roman Reigns. So, I think that he's kind of biding his time until he's able to turn. He's making the most of it, the stuff he did with Christian, and now this really awkward match with Batista. Crowd's still somewhat on his side, but... Anybody's going to be liked against Batista at this point, because Batista is probably one of the most hated guys in the WWE at this point by the fans. So we get our next match, and it's another uh, tag match. This time, Divas tag team action. It's a Nikki and Brie Bella against the Divas champion AJ Lee and Tamina Snuka. Once again, AJ just can't buy a win, which pretty much telegraphs the fact she's retaining at WrestleMania. Unless something drastic happens, I think that she'll probably retain at Mania now, even though I think it'd probably be more money to do something with a, uh, a win from Natalia, or even maybe the Bella Twins, or potentially Tamina herself, or maybe a surprise. Like I said, like a Lita possibility or something like that. Maybe a Paige situation, that'd be nice, but yeah. I mean, that's just probably not going to happen. I say that AJ has lost way too much, so she's either A going to lose again, or B, she, this is just telegraphing her retaining. So we go uh, through this match, and Tamina hits a Simone drop on Nikki Bella, and AJ wants the tag, so Tamina reluctantly tags her in. She makes a cover to try to steal the win, and Nikki kicks out at two. So AJ locks on a front face lock, and she turns it into her hanging guillotine choke. Nikki breaks her grip and goes for an over-the-shoulder power slam and gets trapped in a rear naked choke. Obviously, we know who AJ uh, has been uh, watching lately, watching a lot of MMA, obviously. So Tamina ends up tagging herself in this time, hits a short arm clothesline on Nikki and goes for a middle rope splash or falling headbutt, depending on uh, what direction you're coming from. It could go either way, and that misses. Tagging to Bree. Bree comes in with a leaping clothesline, a drop kick, and a whip in, charges in with a knee strike, and she goes for a running knee. It gets blocked. Pushes her off the ropes, and she hits it again this time. It actually connects. Hits Brie Mode off the middle rope, and smartly knocks AJ off the apron. So AJ gets shoved on her behind on the ring apron, and this allows Tamina to tag in AJ, who's kind of groggy from getting slammed on the, the apron, because of course it is the hardest part of the entire ring. And she walks right into Bree's boot in the midsection and the, the Bella factor. And AJ is pinned for a three count. So Bella's win. Yeah. Really telegraphing AJ retaining at WrestleMania. Really are. Big time. So we get another episode of Awkward Date Theater with Emma and Santina Morella. I think Emma is adorable. And I, I, I like the chemistry she has with Santino. But, you know, I mean... There's one thing about this. It's kind of getting a little, like, hokey. It's really hokey at this point. So, they're having dinner, and Santino is basically called by Emma as the ultimate friend with benefits. So, Santino's eyes light up like a Christmas tree, and 
She's like, friends with benefits? What kind of benefits? And she's like, yeah, you're my friend, Santino. And there are benefits about it. Obviously not being double meaning whatsoever. Emma just doesn't get it. So she wants to, he wants to look into Emma's eyes and stare longingly into them. And Emma just wants to have a staring contest. So Emma stops and is like, you know, Santino, I know what you're going to say. And trust me, I feel the same way you do. You and I will always be the best of friends. So yeah, they they do the the Santino's about to throw up, and she basically ends up getting wine spit in her face. And yay, awkward date theater! I really don't like this. ADT time is not fun on SmackDown, and uh, yeah. So I'm happy Emma's on television, but. I want to see her wrestle on television, and uh, I know we got a match with her on and Summer Rae on Superstars, which I didn't gonna, did not get a chance to talk about. It was okay for what I remember, but <clears throat> this awkward date theater, yeah, something's gonna come to a head. Maybe they like have the big like fairy tale kiss at WrestleMania after something happens with Emma or Santino and during the, either the Battle Royal or the Vicky Guerrero Divas Inter Invitational. Which we still don't know the rules from. We don't know anything about it. It could be first pinfall, which could be a massive cluster, because that's 14 divas in a ring. Or it could be maybe, I'd say it won't be a battle royal, because obviously we've got the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, so why tarnish the image of that by having a divas match where people can get eliminated but getting like knocked out of the ring, not tossed over the top rope, and get thrown through the rope and you're still eliminated. I mean, I'd love to see like hardcore title rules, like, the champion is the person who has the belt by the time that the time expires. But I don't know if we're going to do that or not. I mean, it's going to be like finishers galore leading to craziness. So, yeah, I think it's going to be just like everybody just beat AJ like a redheaded stepchild. And eventually somehow AJ retains with potentially help from an outside source. I think AJ may be getting a new bodyguard soon. You know, honestly, if if it was up to me, and I would say this right now, it would be really awesome to see her bodyguard be Karma. Really interesting if they did that, but I don't think that that's the direction they're going. Or if she cleaned her act up and she's willing to do wrestling again, you know, China wouldn't be a bad idea for this at this point. But I think that something, some way, either AJ's going to retain due to nefarious means, like all the Divas want to steal the win, and AJ ends up stealing it because of that and runs away, living again to fight another day, or... AJ finally drops the championship at WrestleMania, letting somebody have a huge WrestleMania moment, and I'm guessing it's somebody in the cast of Total Divas. Or potentially someone from the next day if they want to go that direction. Even though Paige is not officially entered into the match, I would say that that could be a good idea. I mean, Emma's in the match, but I mean, yeah, I think your big winner here, if they're going to put the title on anybody, is either one of the Bellas or Natalia. Especially after everything that's gone down. We get a really rushed uh, singles match between Jack Swagger and Jimmy Uso. And Swagger goes right to work immediately with the repeated knees in the corner. And Swagger ends up getting tossed over the top rope. We get the Samoan suicide dive on Swagger. Tosses him back in. Goes up top. Flying body press 1-2 and a kick out. The Savak kick to the ribs and kicks him straight in the face. Duck Swagger's clothesline, catches him in the high leg lariat, and the chops in the corner. Whip in reverse, and he nails the uh, whisper in the wind, one, two, and a kick out. He does the Rikishi charge, and it gets stopped with a diving clip, and he locks on the Patriot lock. He tries to fight out of it, he drags in the middle of the ring, and Jimmy taps. So, yeah. It was alright. Short. Real short. Semi-main event time, it is The Miz against the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, and uh, we go midway through this very short match here. Whip in to the corner, and then he whips him in the corner again. He goes for the world's strongest slam. It gets countered, and Miz goes to work on the knee, of course, setting up for the figure four that he should not be using as a heel. So, or period. Go back to the skull-crushing finale. You can do it to anybody. So he ends up getting shoved off. And ducks the clothesline and drop kick to the knee on Mark Henry. And he drops the elbows repeatedly to the leg and knee to the back of the knee. 
And he catches him with a boot off the ropes, makes a cover one count only. He locks Cravat on the foot, and he gets kicked off. Charges in, Mark Henry gets the boot up, and clothesline, clothesline, over the shoulder power slam. Gets on all fours, does the junkyard dog head butt. Drags him to the corner, goes for the Vader bomb. He misses, Miz goes for the figure four, gets kicked off. He dumps him over the top, does the Miz, and he celebrates. And of course, he gets dragged out under the bottom rope and tossed in the ring steps. Then tossed in the barricade. Then tossed in World Strongest Slam, one, two, three. So yeah, that was a match. And I really would have put the Miz over in this one, especially because what happened with him and uh, Hulk Hogan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Joe Manganiello on uh, Raw Monday night. So have the Miz get some sort of a win here, even by nefarious means, it would have been a good idea. Like feet on the ropes would have been a good idea or took the tights or something, just getting a win. So we get our main event. It's Bray Wyatt and the Big Show. And it's short, too. So Big Show goes for the goozle, and he's going for the choke slam, and Wyatt kicks him in the knee. We've seen this a lot in this show tonight, haven't we? Comes off the ropes, Big Show mows him over the big boot. Goes off the ropes for a leaping elbow, and Bray Wyatt's out of the way. So he kicks him in the head three separate times. A big right hand drops him. He drops an elbow off the ropes, and he does his leaping back senton, one, two, and Big Show kicks out. So, he bends in the corner, upside down. He does his upside down in the corner. And then he bumps, presses up on his hands, and does his exorcist crab walk towards the big show. And once he does that, he charges in, going for the avalanche in the corner, and big show nails him with a clothesline. Then another clothesline, whip in. He charges in with the uh, butt splash in the corner, and it misses. Bray with a running avalanche, and he goes for it again, and Big Show tries to put the boot up, and Bray catches him, and he stuns the boot, trying to hyperextend the knee, comes off the ropes with the fall of humanity, and Harper nails the Big Show as Eric Rowan has the referee distracted, and Sister Abigail finishes it. One, two, three, Bray Wyatt wins, so. Not a great edition of SmackDown. Enough much I really would recommend here. Um, yeah, no. I really wouldn't recommend anything on the show. Um, the Shield matches were alright. Uh, Bray and the Big Show was too short. Very uh, dark match style, like five minute dark match after a show's over. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we're going to get Cesaro and Jey Uso on Raw to put over their match on... Um, Sunday at WrestleMania, next Sunday, not tomorrow, or maybe you do two four ways involving singles matches, we can do that, to build up the match at WrestleMania, I don't think you do that either, possible, so we get that, and The Miz and Mark Henry, eh, it was kind of there, and um, Sin Cara and Damian Sandow, it, it was kind of there, and... Batista and Sheamus, it, it was kind of there. Yeah, it's just... I mean, if you missed an edition of SmackDown, it wasn't bad to miss this one, honestly. It wasn't... I mean, it's not horrible, but there's really not much to talk about, honestly. It's like it's about a half hour. I'm already done, so... <clears throat> mm. We proceed towards WrestleMania. We've got, obviously, this Monday's Raw, which is in Batista country, Washington, D.C., so that's going to be fun. We've got Tuesday's main event, and then we have Friday SmackDown, which is officially the go-home show for WrestleMania, because it is the last show that's going to air. And then Saturday, you got the WWE Hall of Fame on the WWE Network, which I'll gladly be watching Saturday night. So yeah, there's a lot to look forward to, since it is now WrestleMania week as of Monday, so... Really good stuff to look forward to, and we mow into April, and this year has gone by oh so fast. So wrestling fans, I will join you yet again on Tuesday when we're going to talk a little Monday Night Raw. Obviously, the Raw Go Home edition of leading of the event. Ah, wow. The Go Home edition of Raw leading to WrestleMania 30. I don't know why I said it that way. I just did. And, of course, I've got NXT from last week. I'll be talking about that on Wednesday. And, I don't know, maybe Thursday 
who knows, maybe you might get an NXT from this week. I don't know, maybe. Might happen. So, <clears throat> and of course, this Sunday, this coming Sunday, not this Sunday, not tomorrow, a week from tomorrow, WrestleMania 30. So, really interesting to see where we go with this, what happens on Raw this Monday, and what happens on SmackDown next Friday to lead us into the event and see exactly what possibly will happen. Will we know who will be the final participants in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? Will we know what matches may be on the pre-show? Who knows? There's a lot of things to talk about, and like I said, this SmackDown is, is kind of there, but like I said, I think this is the last so-so show. I think these next two shows, these Raw and SmackDown leading towards WrestleMania this week, should be off the charts because we know they have to be the last build-up you see before WrestleMania. So it's going to be big. So, that being said, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe, and help spread the word about Pop. If you'd like to like our Facebook fan page, it's Soro and Disney Pop. If you'd like to be my friend on Facebook, sure, go right ahead, it's Owen Disney. And if you'd like to tweet me, you're more than welcome to, it's at Soro and Disney. Last but certainly not least, you want to send your thoughts, comments, queries, and opinions, ideas you have for WrestleMania, you want to talk wrestling with me, you want to talk Disney, Universal, Halloween Horror Nights, you want to shoot me an email, you want to be a podcast yourself, or you have any suggestions, send all this information via my email, sorrowanddisney at gmail.com. In the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching. And until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I gotta say about that.